Hey yo, what's up again? It's been a couple of days now, but I'm back again. This time with uh, another One Piece chapter review, because the last one was two weeks ago, because that's when the last chapter released. But yeah, uh, again, this is kind of like spoilers, I guess, since I'm reading the scans and not the actual official release. So yeah, if you do not want to get spoiled and not watch this video anymore there's spoilers to the new chapter which is 1072 yes it is 1072 so if you don't want to get spoiled for the chapter please do not watch this video anymore but anyways i did want to talk about some things before i get into the video it looks like uh I'm probably gonna be able to start doing videos again, but <laughs> the only problem right now is that I guess I, I still have the rash on my hands, but it's not as like it's not as bad as it once was. So I don't feel really terrible, like physically or mentally. It's like I can do more videos, but they'll probably still come out slower because. They're not fully healed, so I, I can't really say if something's going to happen. And I'm going to have to stop for a bit, so... Yeah, that's besides everything in this video. Besides the point. We're doing a review on chapter 1072 of One Piece. Okay, so this chapter... I, I can't even be surprised anymore, like... <laughs> there's no, like, insane reaction I can give to this chapter because... Every single chapter for this arc has just been good. Like, there's like, at least personally, I haven't felt like any single chapter has been boring. This chapter, I will, I will get into some criticisms on this chapter later on, but for the most part, I really enjoyed it. Not as good as the last chapter, but it's still like a solid chapter. And again, Egghead, the goat. All right, so. <clears throat> Not getting into the chapter specifically, but just talking about some things relating to the chapter right away. I guess I'm gonna skip to the to the best parts, which uh is kind of in the beginning, honestly. I really like the part with uh, Bonnie and Vegapunk, and uh, showing showing a little bit more of her powers, her uh, ability to change people's ages and stuff, and even able to change her own age or body. I don't, I don't even know what she did there. Like it's like distorted future like what the heck does that do like does she like change herself to become stronger that's that's insane to think about but anyways besides that i did like uh bonnie and kuma's well not bonnie and kuma's yet but it's bonnie and vegapunk's interactions in this chapter i think that was the most interesting part of this chapter just seeing uh vegapunk talk about kuma and uh we got to see Kuma a little bit fighting off some of the Marines. But <laughs> my favorite part was just seeing how, like, how much Bonnie does care about Kuma to the point where she's, he would never do, like, he would never abandon me. That's, that's how much he, he loves Kuma. And, like, I think that for Kuma, this is probably just as hard for him because if Bonnie loves him that much, that means that he must be a really good father. And he must really love Bonnie too. So Kuma's setting up right now to be possibly the most interesting character in One Piece for like a good amount of time, honestly. I'm not going to say that there hasn't been any other characters that have been introduced that haven't been interesting. But like throughout the whole series, he stayed mysterious. He stayed fresh, in my opinion. Like, every single time you hear Kuma, it's like, oh, it's Kuma. I'm like, ooh, what is he up to? <laughs> so yeah. What, what has he been cooking, basically? So, going past that, you have Bonnie going into the room with, uh, which is, <laughs> <laughs> this part is kind of funny to me because <laughs> she's like, Vegapunk's like, that, that room has nothing to do with Kuma. And then there's just like a giant Kuma paw, like, oh, wow, that was good. Good job on hiding that. Vegapunk, <laughs> you're the world's smartest man, but you can't hide a room. 
dedicated to Ruma any better. <laughs> that was so funny to me. Uh, and then uh, Bonnie looks at the thing, and it, apparently it's his memories, which we've seen him take out pain before, so it's not a stretch to see to say that he can remove memories, but isn't it kind of insane that he's able to just remove memories? Imagine if he did this against like any top tier. You think he could brainwash them? Come on, that's that is overpowered. I, I'm not gonna lie, he has a really powerful ability. What if he could also remove devil fruits from people? Oh my gosh. That would be insane. Holy jeez. Besides that, it's saying that it's his memories. And Vegapunk saying that it would kill a normal person. So are we going to see another Zoro moment with Bonnie? Where she's going to come out and she's going to be like, nothing happened. And then just standing there and then Luffy comes in. She's like, what happened? And then she says that the iconic line. That would be pretty cool, honestly. But I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But it's funny to think that. That's a possibility. Uh, besides that, Kaku is actually awakened, which uh, obvious, obviously he was going to be awakened, but even more so, Brooke was on the ship the entire time, which is uh, cool, I guess. But again, he didn't do anything this chapter. It was mainly Zoro. He fends off Kaku very easily. I don't think he even used Conqueror's Hockey or anything like that. So yeah, basically, Zoro's Honestly, he could have probably taken on all of ZP0, even with Brook. Like, I, I mean, especially with Brook, he could have probably taken them on all on. But they had the Seraphim with them, so yeah, that was kind of like the one thing. It, oh, we gotta kill the Vega Planks before they can resume control of the Seraphim, so then we can beat them. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of interesting now because it's like, sure, the Vega Planks could probably make it there in time and stop the Seraphims, but. The fact that the Seraphims are still under the control of uh, CP0 is a better, is better in my opinion. It's a better twist to have that. But here's where my main problem with this chapter comes. So don't get me wrong. This moment is kind of, I, I reread it and I, I understand it. now. And it, even more so with the context of previous chapters, this moment is actually pretty cool. Like it's actually actual foreshadowing in one piece usually people will say something is foreshadowing like oh uh you know that one scene in skypea where luffy's doing the pose of sangha no. nika that's that's foreshadowing no that's not foreshadowing that's that's a callback to luffy doing the thing in skypea that is not foreshadowing foreshadowing is actually showing off that hey there's like Four gods in Skypea in the Skypea backstory. They mentioned that there's four gods, and one of them is Sun God Nika. That's foreshadowing. That's telling us, hey, there's something here. You're gonna learn about it later on. And it turns out that Luffy, who was on Skypea, is Sun God Nika. So you see, that's that's more of a foreshadowing than than it is a a callback in a sense. Or maybe that, that was foreshadowing, and I'm just like, I can't really understand it. You know, I'm going to go with the narrative that it isn't foreshadowing. But if it is, then even better, I guess. Because Oda had that plan, but <laughs> it's not the usual stretch some people will try to say, if you get what I'm saying. like Some people will say some, some scenes are foreshadowing, and I'm like, it's not foreshadowing. It's a callback. It's a reference to this chapter. It's not. There's... No way that Oda was foreshadowing this exact moment like that. Like, no, that that's not it. It's not it. But yeah, Lucy ends up uh, fighting Kaku and puts him to sleep, as she says. And she's like, she tells Luchi, "I think you need to go to sleep too." And she tells him like, take a cat nap or something, which is pretty kind of cold on the street. Yeah. Basically, the only problem I really have with this chapter is that the fact that Stussy knocked out uh, Kaku, right? I really hope that Oda didn't use this as a cop-out answer to defeat CP0. I really don't 
do not want that. Because, like, it happened with the Nami fight where he had Big Mom take out Ulti, basically. Because Nami did not take out Ulti. That was Big Mom, okay? Do not give credit to Nami because she literally just hit him with one attack. Lit her, hit her with one attack and knocked her out. Come on. It's just... It's not it. It's like, I hope that this is not a cop-out. That's really what I want. If it's not a cop-out, then this is this is a good progression. You know, it's a it's an interesting twist because I... Some people were saying that this could potentially be the person Vegapunk was referring to because they did say that she was a clone for Mads, but... That would just make this even worse. Because <laughs> you already have the Straw Hats. You already have Vegapunk. How the heck is CP0 a threat? If you just have someone undercover from CP0 that's working for all of them. It just... To me, if that's the case, then that is not... that. That's really bad, in my opinion. It would make all of Egghead a lot less interesting. Which I don't think it is. I don't think that's what's actually happening some people are just saying what they want to say right same with me like i'm just uh, expressing my opinion on this uh, i really hope it's not a cop-out answer to this uh situation right now and if it's not a cop-out answer and it actually makes him better because they mentioned that she's part of rocks pirates and some people were saying uh potentially one of uh blackbeard's commanders which Oh, that would be so... I don't know if it would make sense, but it would be pretty cool, honestly, to see, like, Blackbeard with all the Seraphim now. <laughs> that would actually make him a threat. Like, if he had the Seraphim at his disposal, he basically becomes the strongest entity at that moment, even compared to the Marines, because he basically has, like, yonko tier fighters with him. That would basically make him unstoppable if he did get the Seraphim. So if it is that, then that would be cool, but I don't think that makes sense either. And in my opinion, it might be that Lucy might just be like doing her own thing. She's a ex a Rocks Pirate clone, right? She might even have someone else that's Telling her to do this, like maybe an, another member from the Rocks Pirates themselves is telling her to uh, do this. And oh, that just adds an extra layer to this final saga. Ooh. Having the Straw Hats having to now fight an ex Rocks Pirate member with all the Seraphim. Ah, oh, okay. That would actually be really cool. Not gonna lie. So, yeah. That's basically all I have for this chapter. As I mentioned, uh, not better than the last chapter, but still a really good chapter. And uh, the final part is really only a problem if it makes the whole situation... It basically alleviates it. Basically. If Stussy just uh, getting the Seraphim to like take, her with, take them with her, you know? So now she has the Seraphim, and it ends up being like, given to another pirate that Luffy and the crew have to face off, then that is totally fine with me. If it's because Vegapunk asked her to, then that's probably one of the worst. I, I don't even want to say one of the worst, because there's a potential for it not to be terrible, but it would be another, like, flop. So I really hope it's one of the theories I mentioned and not something else. But anyways, that's all for the video. Goodbye. Also, if you did have something to say about this chapter, maybe you think I said something wrong, then you're go ahead and comment. Honestly, I'm fine with I'm fine with uh, changing my opinions of things. I'm not gonna be too hard struck. I've been wrong before on my own theories, and I know that. Having like your own headcanon decide everything for a story is it's always gonna lead to terrible situations. It's like it's why a a couple of uh of months after I started reading One Piece Weekly, I kinda had this bad taste in my mouth after reading every chapter because 
I was just following my head cannon, and whenever things didn't go my way, I kind of got mad. I was like, ah, it didn't go how I thought it was going to go, and then it just made the story worse overall. So, yeah. I'm not saying this is going to make anything worse, but I got to add this because I think it's important. Also, like the video if you like the review, or dislike it if you hated it. That's another thing. All right. For realsies now, goodbye. And good night, or good day. Bye.